I went into this thinking I was just gonna tell some stories about my childhood, you know, do my roots. And then my scout and the Lord and everybody just said, not today. And this is what I look like now. Hi guys, welcome to my bathroom. I don't have my toothpaste mic. Actually I do. Hello, welcome to my bathroom. I just can't use my toothpaste mic at the moment because I will be doing some manual labor. And by that I just mean doing my hair today. So, <laughs> I had a very strange childhood, in case you guys are new here. I grew up with 10 siblings, I was homeschooled, I lived in a very small town, and I was very weird. I was a very unkempt, rogue child. I went rogue at a very young age. And so I have all these stories that I tell sometimes and people think they're just hilarious or crazy or disturbing. And so I thought I would tell you guys some, but I'm not just gonna sit here and tell stories. I'm gonna do my hair. Let me put my mic down now. So my roots are extremely overgrown. I wanna bleach them. So we're just gonna have a little chat and hope I don't ruin my hair. Oh my God. I messed up my hair a lot in life, but never this much. If you've seen me ever do my hair before, you know that generally I mess it up because I can't see the back of my head. But guess what guys, look. I have a mirror. I'm gonna start with this story. I was about eight years old and I loved to cook. My favorite thing to cook was breakfast food. I made waffles, I made pancakes, I made all kinds of things. Now keep in mind I was very young, so I don't know if that was the best thing for a seven year old to be doing unsupervised, but I was doing. I was making up recipes, I was testing things out in the kitchen. I was having an amazing time, okay? And so for this period of time in my life, I was making waffles like almost every day. I was making waffles every day at this point, using the waffle maker all the time. Nobody else really used it, I don't think. I think I was the only one. And you you couldn't really clean it. Like you couldn't take out the um, grills. I don't even know what they are, but those little things that you cook the waffles in, the things that make the waffles waffle shape. And so I would just kind of wipe them down, put it away. Who really knows how to clean a waffle maker? I don't know if anybody knows, but I just ignored it and wiped it down, whatever. So one day I go to make waffles and I pull out the waffle maker, happy as a clam, and I open it up. And oh my God, what I saw inside was like that of a horror movie. It was disgusting, it was disturbing, and it was horrible. So I hadn't made waffles in a few days apparently. I don't really know how many days, but multiple days. And so what I saw when I opened this waffle maker was waffle batter, like uncooked waffles that had just been sitting in the waffle maker for that long. So not only was there waffle batter, there were maggots. I had never seen maggots before in my life up until that point, and I didn't really know what they were, but they were like worms that were made out of waffle batter. I don't know how to explain it any other way. So what do I do? Do I call my mom? Do I tell one of my older siblings? No, because I was embarrassed. That moment, I was just like, I don't want to tell anybody. I just want to get rid of this. It was like disposing of a body at this point. And I also <laughs> really wanted to make waffles. <laughs> I was thinking, I can't clean this in the sink because number one, people will see me, but number two, I feel like that's not adequate enough. Like this is such an intense job that I feel like if I were to do this in the sink, it wouldn't do it justice. Like I have to basically pressure wash this boy. I took it outside and I hosed it off. <laughs> I literally took the whole ass waffle maker, I put it on the driveway like where the hose was and like I guess nobody saw me. You might be wondering like did anybody ask you what you were doing? Did anybody see you? But like, like I said I was pretty unkempt, I was pretty unregulated as a child so everybody was probably busy, you know? Nobody saw me, nobody really had a second thought about it and I hosed that shit off and I made it clean enough to make waffles out. And if you're thinking this, yes I did make waffles out of it right after. Okay, my next story is one that I actually just told to my friends today, so this one is fresh in my mind. <laughs> this one takes place, I'm not sure how old I was, maybe I was like, probably around the same age, probably like seven. So basically, I was young and I had this patch of dirt in my backyard. And honestly, I'm gonna do multiple parts to this series of me telling stories from my childhood, and you will probably hear a lot of stories about being down in the dirt, is what I call it. It was down, like a level, but no, a level below us property wise so my house was on one level of ground and then you had to go down like a path in my backyard to get to down in the dirt okay it was a, it was a large backyard right so down in the dirt was just dirt that's all it was until my dad decided that he wanted to like build it out because my dad's a contractor so he likes to do stuff to his houses okay he puts in like a concrete basketball court and then right next to this concrete basketball court he puts 
grass. And before you put grass, in case you didn't know, you have to put soil to put the grass on top of. So he had like just a fat thing of soil. That's the only way I can describe it. And naturally, as I've been trying to get across to you guys, me and my siblings were a bit crazy and we wanted to hang out in the soil. Okay, I don't know how we decided this. I think it was kind of a spur of the moment kind of thing But we started having a soil fight. So like you know how you'd have like a, a snow fight Wait, is that what you call it? Snowball fight? My hand is cramping. I haven't done this in a long time. Since soil doesn't really like ball up Then we had to use cups and we would fill up a cup with soil And then once that cup was filled up, we would throw it at one of our siblings. We're having the soil fight I'm having the time of my life. Oh my god Hold on guys. I'm getting very stressed out. This is the part of your head that's really hard to see So I'm just getting a little bit stressed and it's hard to speak when I'm getting stressed. So hold on. Oh my god I look like Albert Einstein <gasps> Jesus Christ. Anyway, so we're doing this freaking soil fight, okay? And for some reason I have a glass cup. Like most of my siblings have regular, of course we took the cups from our kitchen because we had no respect for anything. Most of my siblings had like, you know, plastic, like dinner cups. I don't know, kids cups, like stuff that isn't a big deal if you have in the dirt, you know, <laughs> just throw it in the dishwasher right after, you'll be fine. So anyway, I for some reason decide to have a glass cup and I remember it was like thicker than a wine glass. Like it wasn't as thin as a wine glass, but it was like the shape of a wine glass. And it was thick and big and again, glass. And that was just not the smartest idea, I think, for having a freaking soil fight. So I lean down, I kneel down in the dirt and I'm going to reload my cup full of soil. Now, now, you can imagine 10 children under the age of 15 all just launching soil at each other. Like it wasn't like a chill thing. It was like a very intense, like fast paced, stressful. It was war out there, okay? It was no joke. And so I lean down to fill up my soil. There's chaos going around me. There's soil flying left and right. There's children getting hit with dirt in the face and all kinds of things. And then what happens? My little brother, my five-year-old little ass brother, he might have even been younger than that, I don't know. He comes up and jumps on me. Kind of like if you were giving someone a piggyback ride. And like, I guess he's really little, so like he doesn't really know any better. But I was like, dude, why of all times would you decide to jump on me? And my knee goes into the glass cup and it breaks on my knee and a big ass piece of glass goes into my knee. And now that I'm thinking about it, I really hope my little brother didn't feel bad. Oh, now I'm getting sad. One wondering if he felt bad for jumping on my back. That makes me so sad. I really hope he didn't feel bad because he was so little, you know? I hope he didn't feel guilty. Okay, anyway, back to the point of me being an unwatched child, an unsupervised child. I didn't have clean laundry all the time. So like, I didn't have any clean underwear at the time. And I remember right before going to the emergency room, like combing through my dirty clothes, looking for a pair of clean underwear because I had no underwear on. Like when I got this injury, I had no underwear on. And so I knew I was gonna have to go to the hospital and I was worried that I was gonna have to take off my pants and then not have any underwear on. But I had to go, none and so I went to the hospital and I got my stitches and I had to take my pants off So I remember me being an eight-year-old wearing a gown fully naked underneath when you're supposed to be wearing underwear And they performed the stitches on me and I had no pants on so I got embarrassed really easily I remember I was very embarrassed about that and I was hoping they didn't see my coochie But also I was a child and they were doctors and I'm sure they see tons of coochies so it's fine But anyway, uh, I'm gonna let my hair process now. It feels like I have head lice I actually don't know what head lice feels like but I'm just assuming that that's what it feels like I watched this girl the lice clinic on TikTok, and I see like up close videos of lice And it looks like tiny little bugs are just running around having a party on your head So that's what it feels like right now I'm just gonna hang out here hope it ends up even and I'll check back in to tell you my final story Which is just truly something else Oh my Jesus, update guys. <laughs> I put the bleach in and I can't decide whether or not to tone it. I really, really don't want to bleach it again because my scalp is so sensitive. Like, oh, it's all, oh, do you see that? Do you see these spots on my scalp? Oh, that's disgusting. So my options are to just like tone it and hope it works. Also, I did buy these because I initially wanted to do like some pink things going on around here. And so I could use those as a last resort. I'm not sure what to do. 
I really don't want to bleach it again. And I want to tell you guys my last story, but I don't know what to do. I need to figure it out. Hold on. Okay, so based on how my scalp feels and how damaged I know my hair is, I'm just going to tone it once. So even though my roots might be a tiny bit darker, honestly, for the past few months, my roots have been darker than the rest of my hair and it wasn't that noticeable. So I'm just going to tone it and see what happens. Um, The last story is not a long one. It's a short story. It's a haiku and it's just a memory that I have that I want to share with you all. That's kind of disturbing because I don't know why on earth I would have done this. I, I genuinely can not think of a reason. I just can think about the memory of it happening. Oh my god, this piece is so dark. Ugh. I don't know what to do about that. Okay, my husband and his friend just came in and they're like, oh, be quiet, Danny's filming, but I don't want them to hear this story. I'm just gonna whisper this to you like an ASMR because I don't want everyone to hear me. Basically, when I was a kid, I shit in my sister's trash can. And I don't know why, once again, I don't know what I was thinking and I don't have many other memories besides this. I just know that it happened. I know that it happened because I remember doing it. It was one of those really big trash cans, like a tall trash can that you could like get up and sit on. And it was tall and it was empty. And I just remember doing it and then leaving and never talking about it again. I don't know if she said anything or whatever. I don't remember. And I don't think I made it up either. Like I'm 99% I'm sure it happened. I just have no real memories of it. I do know that it happened. I have a lot of stories in that uh, general category that I will tell you guys and you'll think that it is horrifying and one day I'll get to them. My scalp is burning so BRB I gotta rinse out my hair. Oh my god. I've messed up my hair a lot in life but never this much. <laughs> okay, look, I'm literally going to Las Vegas tomorrow. My hair has to look good. I have this. Remember, this is my exit plan. <laughs> no, no, no. I might just have to do. Here we go. Oh my God. Look at this. Should I dilute it? Should I make it lighter? It's hella bright. I do like bright colors. Should I just go for it? I don't want to look like an emo, you know? You know what? YOLO. I'm just gonna do it. YOLO. Oh my God. Can I tell you guys something? I was so embarrassed about this that I just texted my husband. I didn't even let him look at me because I was like, I don't want you to see me looking so ugly. <laughs> so I just texted him. I was like, hey, gotta put pink in my hair. You know, that was the that was the exit plan. And I'm, I'm gonna have to put it in motion. I'm not mad about it. I just wasn't emotionally ready to do this. I'm also kind of nervous that I, I feel like the ends are gonna be very purple because they're toned kind of purple right now. You know, I went into this thinking I was just gonna tell some stories about my childhood, you know, do my roots, finish up. And then my scout and the Lord and everybody just said, not today. Apparently I'm going on a new path in life and this is what I look like now. I usually make decisions to make drastic life changes. Like I do this all the time. This isn't new for me, but I never had the decision made for me. Like usually I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. And then I do it. In this case, I feel overwhelmed and anxious because I'm like, oh, I didn't choose this life. <laughs> It's totally fine. Just gotta wait 25 minutes and then see what happens. Oh my God. It's done. It's done. It, it, I guess this is me now. I look like a freaking emo kid.